Hi guys, welcome back. I uh, hope you can hear me over the noise and um, I hope this video camera is uh, is okay to to view this video. So, um, it's a new camera I've got, it's only a cheap one but I've decided to use a camera rather than my phone. Um, so hopefully this, this should be okay for quality and, and the picture but I shall uh, change it if it's not. Okay, so I'm going to do something a little bit different today than my normal videos. And um, what it is, is I've been making some polyurethane products. I've um, uh, been making some isolation feet and a few other things. And I thought I would share my uh, process of making uh, just simple isolation feet. So these can be made quite simply with polyurethane. Um, these were actually made with a, uh, a very simple mould um, which I don't have here now so um, I'm going to show what I'm going to do with my next mould. So I'm just, just going to explain this is just a, a rubber foot that you can I mean you can buy rubber feet like this but this is a rubber foot from very very soft polyurethane extremely soft and um, these were done for uh, a customer and um, I thought I'd do some very similar but I wanted some with a hole in that I can actually screw to something so these were just held on with uh, some sort of adhesive tape uh, bonding tape um, but I wanted to do some that have a hole and I can actually bolt and attach to a frame or some uh, V-slot or aluminium extrusion. So here's what I've come up with. So I've come up with this two-piece mould. Um, it's, it's bolted together ready to use and I've cleaned it up and um, it's yeah as I say it's ready to use now. It started off as two pieces like this. Um, you basically bolt the two together and why I have done this is the reason being is these were cast in a one single mould and to get them out was quite a challenge and if I put a hole in there and there's something else to grip onto these will be very hard to remove from the mould so that's why I've come up with this two-piece mould and um, hopefully it, it should be able to separate and allow me to remove the, uh, the cast uh, polyurethane without damage to the mould or damage to the product, the polyurethane itself. So there we are, it's just a very simple uh, 3D printed mould designed in Fusion 360 and um, actually printed on my TiVo Michelangelo's which are, you can't see, just, there they are. So they're doing some, some other moulds at the moment actually. So they were just printed in PLA on my uh, TiVo Michelangelo's. Very cheap PLA and a very cheap printer. And uh, they've produced, you know, quite a reasonable, uh, quite a good mould. So I'm just going to move the camera back. So there we are, that's, that's what I've made for the mould. This is a different base plate. What I'm concerned about is I am worried that I might snap these stems off. Uh, they are quite strong for the cheap PLA, so they are, you know, they're, they're reasonably strong. But I'm worried I might snap them, so I've got one with holes in, and I may put some metal dowels in, some metal pegs in there that then won't snap off. So uh, this is my backup, just in case this does break. But we shall try and see what happens. I'm going to put this out of the way for a minute and concentrate on this mould. So um, this has been bolted and clamped together with some M5 cap heads. Not excessively tight, just tight enough to hold it together. And um, what I've, I have sanded this and cleaned it up and got this ready. And basically all I'm going to use guys is this stuff. So it's a two-part mix polyurethane resin rubber and you mix it by weight 
not by volume so I'll say this now there's lots of videos on YouTube where everyone's just pouring this in and doing it by volume um, it's done by weight and the reason being is these two part mixes are a, have a different uh, specific gravity so one is slightly heavier than the other and if you mix by volume you're not getting the exact mix that you require uh, so you do this by weight um, but we'll cover that a bit later so anyway this is what I'm going to use this is a so soft flexible type rubber uh, with a sure hardness of 30 so it's called PX30 and it should give a rubber sure hardness of about 30 um, I will go over quickly the uh, health and safety warning labels that you can see there I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up at all um, but basically you know this is a product with some hazards associated with it and you should take those uh, hazards seriously and wear the correct protective equipment um, fortunately this, this stuff doesn't actually smell so the main thing you need to really worry about is your eyes and your hands so some gloves and some safety goggles would be uh, would be uh, advisable. Um, I have some safety goggles here, so I'll probably put those on in a minute. So this is the product, guys. It's uh, Zencast PX30 soft flexible uh, polyurethane rubber. This stuff actually takes about 24 hours to set in the mold. So once we've mixed this. We get about an hour or so to uh, pour it into our mold or do whatever we're going to do with it. And then we have to leave it for 24 hours before we can demold this from this mold. Full strength is actually achieved in seven days. Um, there are different types of polyurethane on the market, all with different uh, working times or what they call a pot life and um, there are some polyurethanes that will set very quickly some that will set very slowly some that you can have uh, a long pot life in other words you can work with them for a long time before they start to set and there are others that will set very very quickly some that will set in a few minutes this one fortunately is a slow setting product so I have quite a bit of time to get it into my mold and I then have to wait a whole day before I can try and remove it from my mold. If you do it beforehand you're liable to damage your cast molding. So there we are, there's the Zencast PX30 polyurethane which we will, we will mix up in a minute. What we actually need to try and do to, to our molding first though is prepare it <coughs> with a release agent now this is a standard release agent this is actually from Easy Composites um, I'm not advertising the company and I'm not affiliated with the company but I do tend to use them for some of my products so I will show this um, this is a standard release agent that you can buy at many different uh, fiberglass sellers or polyurethane sellers but the same again guys um, I don't know if this is coming out on camera you know there are some health and safety warnings this stuff is worse in terms of uh, damage to your health than, than what this stuff is. This um, does give off noxious gases and fumes and is very flammable and uh, you should use this stuff in the open atmosphere so out in some fresh air or use a respirator because it doesn't uh, it gives off some very nasty fumes but this is a basic release agent that we will apply to our mold. The other thing we can do is we can apply some basic silicon spray. Now this is just standard uh, silicon lubricant which you would use for plumbing, PVC pipes or putting gaskets in or whatever like that. So this is just a standard silicon spray but we can use this as an extra lubricant to uh, help make sure our polyurethane releases from our mold. So there's the products I'm going to use. I'm going to mix in some uh, cheap plastic containers and I'm just going to use a little mixing stick. I will state now that um, you could probably be able to see, I don't know if the camera will focus very well guys, I hope it does. 
but basically there are air, bu air bubbles in this casting and um, these can be removed by a process of what's known as degassing your your mixture and basically what you would do is you would mix these two and then you will put them in a vacuum chamber and evacuate all the air and squeeze out all the, the air bubbles from your mixture. We're not going to do that today because that is, a, that is a, a bit more of an extra process that a lot of people will not be able to do at home. Um, and you don't necessarily need to do that at home for small components like this. For rubber feet, gaskets and that sort of thing, you can get away with not degassing your uh, mixture. So I think I've talked enough about the uh, material and the mould. So there's the material, there's our release agent, there's some silicon spray. Here is our mould ready. And um, now I'm going to get on and basically apply some release agent and let that dry. You should actually apply several coats of this and allow to dry for several hours each time. So apply a coat and let it dry for an hour. Apply another coat and let it dry for an hour. I'm fairly confident that a quick application of this left to dry for 20 minutes and then a good application of silicon spray will be enough so um, that is exactly what I'm going to do on this video the instructions for this are to apply five or six coatings for a brand new mold and this is a brand new mold it's never been used before it isn't totally sealed it is a porous surface so um, ideally I should apply five or six coatings of this um, and let that dry in between. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to see if this works because uh, time is money and um, I'm running out of time today. So this is what I'm going to do and I shall state that now. I'm going to apply one coating, let that dry and then we shall apply some silicon spray and we shall see how we get on. So I'm going to put some gloves on guys, um, always wear gloves when you're doing this uh, sort of stuff, you don't want this, either this or the polyurethane over your, over your fingers and skin, this, um, it's not nice to get everywhere, it's, yeah, so get some gloves and what I'm going to use is some uh, lint free wipes, which is basically some cloth that doesn't have much in the way of loose fibre. So we're going to get one of these lint free wipes and I'm just going to quickly wipe round in my mould just to make sure nothing's in there. It's been sat on the bench for 24 hours now. Um, I was going to do this video yesterday but I just didn't get time. So this has been sat here for 24 hours and there's probably a lot of dust and fluff that's settled in those pockets. So I'm going to remove that like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some of this release agent. Now I should say again this should be applied outside. Uh, it's very smelly stuff. Um, kind of smells a bit in between um, brake fluid and paint thinner. So it's, uh, it's a hydrocarbon product. It's not very nice for the environment and not very nice for you either, so uh, try not to get it all over yourself. So I'm just going to squeeze a bit onto this pad, soak this pad nicely, and before I do anything else, put the lid on the bottle guys, because you don't want that everywhere. So and now I'm going to literally swish round in the bottom of my mould with an extremely soaked cloth. So this cloth is very, very wet. And I'm going to get down in the bottom of the mould and I'm going to make sure there is loads applied into the very bottom. Now this stuff sort of sets as a film and should seal the mould off, which is why they say apply several coatings and leave to dry. As I say, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cheat today. Um, we're just going to apply one coating 
and then we're going to silicon spray it. I'm fairly confident this will work and um, we shall see what happens. So I'm just going around the side wall of the mould, making sure I've got everything in there. Okay, I will just do one more quick one and then we'll leave it to dry. And then just drop some of that. So make sure this is a well soaked cloth. Put the lid back on. And get round in there. Now it's wet enough to coat the surface and leave it shiny but it's not wet enough that it's um, leaving a puddle in there Right, so there we go, that's one good application of release agent. And unfortunately my glove split on the thumb. Um, now my fingers smell slightly of that product. So I'm going to wash my hands and uh, come straight back. But I shall leave that now to dry for 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, we shall come back shortly and uh, carry on with this process. Well, I've left this to dry for about 15 uh, minutes or so, and um, it's uh, dry inside, there's no wet of the um, release agent left. So uh, what I'm going to do now is give us a quick spray of silicon spray, just to add the final bit of lubricant in there. Um, just seen a bit of dust in here that's settled so I'm just going to make sure that's out first. I probably should have turned the mould upside down. Um, usually I turn everything upside down to make sure nothing falls into it but um, I sort of left it on the bench after turning the camera off and didn't think about it and uh, some dust has settled in there. So make sure you get the dust out um, generally a good practice to after you've applied your release agent and the spray is to turn the mould upside down and stop stuff from falling in there. So anyway, I'm going to give this a little spray, but what I'm going to do, just so I don't get silicone all over my bench, so I'm just going to put a bit of tissue down for a minute and just to make sure this doesn't spray out horribly first. That's not too bad. And that's all I'm going to do is just give that a light dusting but not too wet that it's dripping and um, See how that goes. That should do. Not too much. Just going to wipe what little excess I've got on my gloves off so I don't slide everywhere. Move this out of the way. So our mould is now ready. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit. So we are now ready to uh, pour our polyurethane in so uh, let's get mixing and like I say what you need to do is actually measure this stuff out by weight not by volume um, the instructions on most manufacturers 
uh, data sheets will actually say to measure it out by weight not by volume so um, we shall follow the instructions of the manufacturer on this it is a little bit difficult I must admit because my scales only have a resolution of I think uh, one half a gram I think one gram I'm not sure I should check doesn't say on one one gram so uh, for the small amount that I'm mixing up here you probably wouldn't notice much difference even if you were to do it by volume but we shall do it by weight so I'm going to do to make sure I zero my scales nothing touching my scales I put my pot on and re-zero okay I don't know if you can see that very well it's probably too many shadows or light being cast on this let's try there that's a bit better so what I'm going to do now as you can see that's set to zero is I'm going to uh, pour in a, about 45 grams of uh, part A it's, this mould will take about 90 grams uh, 90 millilitres just over to um, fill this mould and so I'm going to mix up about 90 mil, 90 grams so 45 of each so uh, and I'm going to try and do this without getting too much in the way of air bubbles in the mixture because like I said I'm not going to degas this Oh dear, there goes my idea of uh, 45, so I'm at 47 grams and I'm just going to remove my excess from the bottle, I don't want that everywhere. So I need to do the same again of part B, so uh, we need to mix 47 grams of part B what we should do, we should put that aside and try and get 47 grams of part B in this one in fact what I shall do guys is to put that back this is such a small amount we're gonna mix it's actually now gone to 48 okay no we won't, we will do that, we will do it separate pots I was going to just chuck it into one then but we shall do the proper proper way in which is by doing two separate pots so we're on zero grams, we are zeroed let's try and get 47 grams in here and you can see this stuff is a little bit thinner and it's uh, specific gravity is slightly different Ooh, 46, I need such a small amount Forty-seven. Same again. Let's get rid of that. Try and keep our containers uh, mess-free if I can. So in theory, these should be reasonably accurate. Forty-seven grams of B. And that one has gone to 48. And that one's 48. So as I say, not the most accurate of scales. Unfortunately, my decent set of scales are uh, um, out of action at the moment. So I'm down to these cheap ones. And this is the best I can do for today. But this will be fine for this small volume that we're going to mix. This small amount, should I say. So we should have equal amounts of A and B there. And what I'm going to do now is basically pour the part B into the part A and then mix gently. So I'm going to try and do that without adding too many air bubbles. They didn't do very well there. The part B is slightly thinner and easier to pour so I would do it this way rather than pouring the A into the B as you can see there it's 
you know, it's very thin liquid. And that's what's good with polyurethane, it generally is quite a thin, viscous liquid to work with, so um, you can get some really good results with this material. Okay, I know I've got quite a long working time, uh, a long pot life with this uh, semi, this flexible stuff, so I'm not rushing. Had I been using something else, like a, a toughened polyurethane, we would be under a time limit now to get this stuff in and mixed up, but we're not under that constraint today because this stuff does not set very quickly. So what I'm going to try and do now is just stir this without trying to introduce too many bubbles. And uh, I'm just going to tilt the pot on an angle. Just to get down in there. If you can see that, I'll try and come around this way. So I'm just going to stir. Try and not produce too many bubbles. Let's go to the other side of the pot. Mix. I am getting a few air bubbles in here guys, um, try and keep them down to a minimum, but it's uh, virtually impossible to av avoid getting some in there, so um, just as long as we, we are well mixed, that's the main thing. So as you can see it stayed a clear liquid. A uh, slight amber yellow color which will uh, that will dissipate slightly as this sets and will tend to turn almost clear but there will be a slight coloration in the product but you can add uh, colorings and all sorts to this if you wanted And you can dye this almost any colour that you uh, desire, really. Right, so I'm going to take my stick out. That's mixed enough. There are quite a lot of air bubbles in there. So probably more than I would um, normally want, but never mind. I'm sort of doing this quite quickly for the video. So I'm going to put my mixy stick out of the way. And try not to get that everywhere. And basically let's uh, pour into our mould. So see if I can zoom in a bit. No idea what this camera is like yet guys, so I do apologise if it's a terrible picture. Probably is. Don't know if I can get that to focus or not. It doesn't look like it's focusing. I think I have to leave the camera sort of out there. That's where it seems to be focused. So I'm going to get on and pour this into my moulding without trying to make too many air bubbles. I'm just going to pour it till it's flat with the surface as best as I can.
two done. So it's a very simple process, guys. Um, I think if you, you know, if you have a 3D printer to hand, and uh, you ever want to make anything like this, you know, the ability is there for you to do this quite simply. So um, that's why I'm just sort of sharing this video, really. I know there are lots of videos on YouTube already of uh, casting. Um, not many on using a 3D printed mould to get what you want. So that's why I've done this really. And obviously I used 3D printed moulds to get the results that I need. And it's such a simple, cheap process. want that on that screw because I don't want that to join the mould. So I'm just going to remove that excess before I go any further. I don't want to have to cut that off later. Okay, back to pouring. As you can see, this stuff is uh, still very uh, viscous. It's not going off at all yet, so plenty of time to uh, get the right quantity in your mould. No need to rush with this softer, flexible. Uh, quite a long time to work with it, which makes it a little bit easier. Still a little bit left over, so I actually overdone that. It's probably about probably got away with 85 grams, um, maybe 80 grams. So never mind. Rather have enough than than not enough. So our mould is in there. I'm just going to tap this to see if I can get some of the larger air bubbles out. They will rise over time. And um, the bigger ones should come out on their own. Actually, I'm just going to add a fraction more to that one. Just a little bit.
Okay, there we go. I think that should do us. So that's going to now have to uh, be left to set for uh, 24 hours before we can do anything with that. And then we should be able to remove those um, from the mould and um, they will actually then take a further six days to reach full strength. But um, these ones that I cast only a few days ago, they're only three or four days old and um, they are more than strong enough to be used. Uh, and um, these were probably strong enough after a day. So uh, we shall demold this in 24 hours and see what they come out like. So there we are guys, just a very quick uh, introduction to casting polyurethane parts with a 3D printed mould. Um, I will put some, some more videos up sh soon on um, the other bits that I've sort of been casting and making. And um, yeah, hopefully this may help someone or help a few people in uh, solving some problems that they want to do at home. But there we are guys, uh, simple 3D printed mould, two piece mould, clamped together and now with uh, some polyurethane in that's going to set. So we shall see what happens tomorrow and um, remove these. Well it's been 24 hours now and our uh, polyurethane mould has been sat for long enough for us to try and remove from the mould so uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do now is loosen off all these bolts and um, see what happens when we try and separate this try and separate this with my fingers. Seems to be coming out fairly easily. And uh, see how they come out this way. That, that came out extremely easy that was very easy to separate and remove these these are very soft still so uh, they probably need to be left to set for a little bit longer and uh, they are obviously covered in silicon from um, the spray that I put on so Just going to use a bit of isopropanol again. Just give them a bit of a wipe. Anyway, there we are, some cast polyurethane feet, I'm not sure if that's even on focus, will the camera focus, probably not, 
But there we go. You know, you've got your little hole in there and a, a recess to put a nice washer and a bolt. And uh, that was uh, the use of the first casting of this mold. So there we are guys. Simple casting of polyurethane feet using a 3D printed mold. Uh, here we are. And um, I think that wraps this video up and I will uh, do another video on some of the other things that I've been casting and molding that are a little bit more um, complex than just rubber feet. But there we are guys, nice and easy for you to copy or do similar. Thanks for watching.